Hello everyone! Let's talk about the properties of operations for integers or whole numbers for addition and multiplication. Let's begin with the properties of operation for addition of integers or whole numbers. First, we have the closure property. What does it mean? It means that if we are going to add two whole numbers or two integers, the sum is also a whole number or an integer. For example, we have 5 plus 8 is equal to 13. So 5 and 8 are whole numbers. And so, the sum is also a whole number, which is 13. Another one. We have negative 3 plus 5 is equal to 2. So, negative 3 and 5 are both integers or whole numbers and the sum of these two whole number is also a whole number which is 2. So that's what we mean by closure property. Two integers added together, the result is also an integer. The second property is commutative property. It means that no matter what the order of our addends is, the sum is still equal. For example, we have 6 plus 3 is still equal to 3 plus 6. If we have 6, plus 3 added together, it will give us 9, which is also equal to, if we are going to rearrange or change the order of this 6 and 3, like we have 3 plus 6, the sum is still equal to 9. So, that's what we mean by commutative property. Another one. If we have negative 5 plus positive 2, that is still equal to 2 plus negative 5. So, let us try to find the sum. Negative 5 plus 2 is equal to negative 3, which is also equal to if we have 2 plus negative 5, that is negative 3. So that's what we mean by commutative property. If we change the order of the two addends, the sum is still equal. Next, we have the associative property. It means that if we have three or more addends, no matter how we group the numbers, the sum is still the same. For example, we have one plus 2, plus 3, and we group 1 and 2, that is still equal to, if we are going to change the order again of our grouping, like we have 1, plus 2, plus 3, and we take 2 and 3 as one group, then let us see, what the result is or what the sum is. So, 1 and 2 or 1 plus 2 is equal to 3 
plus 3 that is still equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 5. So 3 plus 3 is equal to 6 which is also equal to 1 plus 5 that is 6. So that is what we mean by associative property. Another example. If we have negative 3 plus 4 plus 5 and we have 3 and 4 as the uh, one group that is still equal to negative 3 plus 4 plus 5 and we, we will have 4 and 5 grouped together. So let us see if the sum is still the same. Negative 3 plus 4 is 1 plus 5 well, that is still equal to we have negative 3 plus 4 and 5 we have 9. So 1 plus 5 is equal to 6 and 6 is equal to negative 3 plus 9 is still equal to 6. So that is the associative property of addition. How about the identity property? The identity property is that when a number is added to zero, the result is the number itself. So, for example, we have 15 plus 0 is equal to 15. So, if we are going to add 0 to any number, the result is the same number. And 0 here is what we call the identity element for addition. So, 0 is the identity element. Another one. Negative 50 plus 0 that is still equal to negative 50. So, any number added to 0, the result is the same number. Remember that 0 is the identity element for addition. That if you add any number to this 0, the result is the same number. Next, we have the added Additive inverse property. The additive inverse says that adding the opposite of the given integer will result to zero. For example, we have negative 2 plus if we add the additive inverse of negative 2 that is positive 2, the result is 0, which is the identity element for addition. So, that means the opposite of that number, that is the additive inverse. Another one. Negative 5 plus the additive inverse of negative 5 or the opposite of negative 5 is positive 5. Negative 5 plus 5, the result is always equal to 0. So, that is the additive inverse. Adding the opposite of the given integer or the whole number will always result to 0. Or it will always give a sum of 0. So, that is the additive inverse property. Next, we have the properties of operation for multiplication. 
just like addition we also have the closure property for multiplication what does it says about the closure property it tells us that multiplying two whole numbers or two integers will give a product of an integer or whole number also for example we have 35 times 2 is equal to 70 so two whole numbers multiplied together will also give the product of a whole number which is 70 another example negative 2 times 3 gives us negative 6 so two integers multiplied together negative 2 and 3 will result to an integer which is negative 6 so that's what we mean by closure property how about commutative property it says that if you are going to multiply a number or multiplying two numbers and changing the order of the factors will give the same product. For example, we have 4 times 5. The product is 20. And if you are going to change the order of that, these two numbers it will give us the same product which is 20 so we can rewrite it this way 4 times 5 is just equal to if we change the order of 4 and 5 that is 5 times 4 it will give us the same product which is 20 so, 12, 4 times 5 is 20, and 5 times 4 is 20. So, that is what we mean by commutative property. Another one, if we have negative 3 times negative 5, if we are going to change the order of these two integers, and it will become negative 5, times negative 3 it will still give us the same result so negative 3 times negative 5 is positive 15 it's just equal to negative 5 times negative 3 is positive 15 so that's what we mean by commutative property next we have the associative property it means that grouping the factors differently will still result to the same product. For example, we have 5 times 4 is considered as one factor times 2. It's just equal to, if we are going to change the order of our groupings, we have 5 times 4 times 2. It is considered as one factor. Uh, so we have now, 5 times 4 is 20. Simplify this first. So, we have 20 times 2 is equal to 5 times, simplify this, 4 and 2, we have 8. So, 20 times 2 is 40. That is just equal to 5 times 8, which is 40. So, as you can see, no matter how we change the order of our groupings, 
the product is still the same. It does not change. Another example. If we have negative 6 times 3, one of the factors, times 1, it's just equal to as when we have negative 6 times 3 times 1 it will give us negative 6 times positive 3 that is negative 18 times 1 is just equal to negative 6 times simplify this one negative 3 positive 3 times 1 is equal to positive 3 so we have 18 times 1 is negative 18 is equal to negative 6 times 3 is negative 18 so that is the associative property for multiplication changing the order of our groupings will not affect our product Next is we have the identity property. The identity property states that any number multiplied by 1 will give us the same number. For example, we have 5 times 1 will give us the same number which is 5. Another, if we have negative 2 times 1, it will give us the same number which is negative 2. So, 1 here is the identity element for multiplication okay just like that of addition it has identity property which is zero and for multiplication the identity property is one or positive one the next property is what we call the multiplicative inverse property what is it all about? It says that if you are going to multiply whole numbers or integers to its multiplicative inverse, the resulting product is equal to 1. So, for example, we have 3 times you multiply this by the multiplicative inverse of 3, which is 1 over 3. The result is always 1. Another example. If you have negative 4 multiplied by its multiplicative inverse, the result is negative 1 over 4 so the multiplicative inverse of negative 4 is negative 1 fourth the result is always positive 1 because if you are going to multiply these two factors and if you use the cancellation method for multiplication you can actually cancel this out right so it will give you one just like this one three times one third you can cancel out three and three so you have one which will result to the identity element for multiplication which is one so that's what we mean by multiplicative inverse
Next is the zero property. It's just so easy. The zero property states that any number multiplied by zero, no matter how big or how small the number is, or the integer or whole number is, the result or the product is always equal to zero. So if you have 100 multiplied by zero, the result is always zero. Any number, whether it is negative, like 70 times zero, the result is always zero. That is all about the zero property for multiplication. Next, we have the distributive property of multiplication over addition. So, it means that adding first before multiplying will give us the same result as when we distribute first the factor to each of the addend will give the same result. For example, we have mm, 5 times 3 plus 6. It says that the product is still equal to as when we distribute first the factor to each of the addends before multiplying will give us the same result. So, 5 times 3 plus Five times six. Mm, that is equal to five. Let us see if they have the same product. Five times we add first. Three times six. Three plus six rather we have nine is equal to we distribute first the addends, multiply and then add so we have 15 plus 30 that is 5 times 9 is 45 which is equal to 15 plus 30 is 45 so it is true that if we are going to add first before multiplying it will just give us the same result as when we distribute first we multiply first and then we add. So that is the multi distributive property of multiplication over addition. So here we have two operations that is multiplication and addition. So this is all about the properties of operations for addition and multiplication. I'll leave you exercises for you to answer and I hope you do it very well. And if you learned something from this video, hit like and subscribe and watch out for more upcoming math videos. Thank you for watching.